How not to get scammed by a Filipina? Simple. Don't send her money. If you are talking to a Filipina online, if you are talking to her for a few days, for a few weeks, for a few months, and she asks money from you, please do not be stupid enough to send her money, okay? You should know the red flags. You should know this. Men should know this. It doesn't mean that you are talking to a hot, pretty, beautiful, awesome, sexy Filipina. You have to give in straight away. Use your brain. Use your instinct. If your instinct is telling you that don't send her money, please don't send her money. It takes two to tango. I couldn't agree more. The problem is that expats' instincts are not always in their brains, and this is when the problems arise. Yes, there are red flags, and you will see them, but it's easy to dismiss them, especially if you're talking to someone stunning that you feel that you have a connection with. But this is the trap. The reason that these scams are so common in the Philippines is because they work. Filipinas are beautiful and scammers use these looks and the whole damsel in distress story to make you feel like you are their hero. But whatever the situation, there is a lot of unique advice out there on the beautiful world wide web. So I thought, why not take a look at what Filipinas and foreigners are saying about dating in the Philippines? And as I'm always talking about the positives, why not look at the other side of the coin and look at topics that are not spoken about on YouTube? They're, some are expressive, some are not, but they're fine, they're, 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 they're okay. It's a little bit different, but at the same time, um, it's because of there's like a culture difference between the two of you sometimes you 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 tend to not like match with whatever you like with with a guy but it's okay as long as the guy is open-minded and easy to hang around then that's fine she said open-minded i've been speaking to locals for the last 10 years on topics such as dating in southeast asia and it doesn't matter if i find myself in thailand vietnam philippines or anywhere else the number one reason southeast asian women give for dating foreigners is that they are open-minded as we will explore in a moment filipinas have a really wild side but it appears at least from what i've been told locals are not as open-minded compared to Westerners. Nevertheless, if you're thinking about dating in the Philippines, open-mindedness is a big bonus for a lot of Filipinas. Now, as I mentioned, we'll be talking about the wild side, and I found a Filipina who is not afraid to talk about some of the most sensitive topics. According to Rika Cruz, a sex therapist, rough sex is one of the things that Filipino women want in bed. In her interview with Vice, she conducted a qualitative study on the sexual desires of Filipino women in 2020 for her PhD dissertation at Ateneo de Manila University. So aside from enjoying rough sex without reservations, Filipino women in her study also fantasize about having sex in public places where they potentially get caught. If you are just looking for hookups, this is likely music to your ears. After all, who doesn't love a wild time? But put those brakes on for just a moment, because there is wild and fun, and then there's wild and crazy. What a lot of dating videos and dating gurus won't tell you is that there is a lot of people out there who are messed up, and I mean mentally. To be serious for a moment, a lot of terrible stuff has happened to people when they were young, and then as adults they get addicted to pornography, hooking up, and a lot of other stuff to cope with the pain. And for many years, there wasn't the support in the Philippines as there were in other countries. As much as I dislike what is happening in the Western world, I feel very lucky to be born in a place where you can easily get support. So you might be thinking, well, what is the big deal? The problem is that not being at the right place of mind can lead to uncontrolled behaviours that impacts a person's thoughts and shapes their life. Sex addicts, for example, often cheat on their partners. If you were dating a Filipina who was a sex addict, you might be thinking you're the luckiest man alive, but would you trust her if you had to fly home for a few months? 
absolutely not. This is not only Filipinas of course, but I've met so many expats who have ended up in terrible relationships. They have been lied to, they have been cheated on, and most often they are ignoring those red flags. There is also the side of sexual repression. This is not so much of a big thing now as most Filipinas have been brought up with a modern and western lifestyle, but there are many who I've spoken to over the years who say that they have grown up feeling repressed. In most cases what often happens is that later in life they decide to make up for lost time if you know what I mean. A good friend of mine, Alex, was living in Manila and at the time he was dating the daughter of a priest. My god, the stories made me blush and let me tell you, I've heard a lot of crazy stuff. To cut a long story short, she was brought up in a very strict way and at the age of 25, 26, ended up as somebody who wanted to try it all. These are of course extremes and in most cases being a bit wild is no problem, I mean after all, we all have our wild side. But I wanted to highlight a few of these points, as in some cases being really wild is a red flag. Getting involved with someone who is not mentally stable is not a good idea, and I don't just mean relationships here, I mean hooking up, having fun, whatever you want to call it, because they need professional support to help them deal with their problems. If you want to win the heart of a Filipina, stop showing off and start showing attention. Stop bragging about yourself. Bragging is a turnoff, not just the Filipinas. What really turns a Filipina on a lot is a sense of humor. I get it. The problem is that men naturally brag. This is dating psychology. Women tend to put emphasis on their beauty and usefulness, and men put emphasis on their money and their power. In the Philippines, talking about money is the easiest way to find a gold digger. But the problem is, if we're on a date with a Filipina who we really like, we tend to start talking about stuff like business, income, as I said, dating psychology. So you have to really stop yourself because if you don't, you will start to attract the wrong kind of woman. Oh wait, stop, stop guys, I've just heard a latest news report. Yep, that's right. Okay, it's saying that women are attracted to money. I know that there's a lot of feminists out there that say women don't, but let's be real, the vast majority do. In our modern world, money is power, money is freedom, and money is security. It's only logical that a woman would be attracted to that, but if they are only attracted to that, then that's a problem. Okay, let's face it. Long distance relationships aren't always a walk in the park. It's like trying to enjoy a delicious hamburger without the meat. Something's definitely missing. But as the saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And there are countless couples who have braved the distance and come out stronger than ever. Plus, think of all those airline miles you'll rack up. Hello, free flight. Yeah, no thank you. To be fair, long distance relationships can work and there are many successful stories out there. But the challenges are great and you have to really think whether it's worth your time. You could be talking to someone for months or even years and then it all falls apart. There is the lack of physical connection, the issue of trust and so much more. If you are into open relationships, it can work, but if you're looking for a committed relationship, 99% of the time it won't end well. The reality is, most of the time, if something does happen behind your back, you won't know about it. And it's not nice to think about, but I'm just saying how it is, brother. This YouTuber is great. I've seen a lot of her videos, and I agree with most of her points, but I really don't think long-distant relationships are the right option for most people. You know, if the red flags pop up, you gotta walk away from it, man. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll get scammed. You know, the thing is, the Philippines is a developing country, and a lot of girls there, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a, there's a sect of girls there that are looking for pretty much one thing, and that's financial support. So um, now there's a lot of girls there that are not. There's a lot of great women in the Philippines. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. But if you meet one that's throwing up a lot of red flags, you have to walk away. So basically what happened with him, and I don't have much time, is he meets this girl in one of those Facebook groups for, for uh, Filipinas looking for foreign men, okay? So he meets her, she lives in Mespate, um, and immediately she starts asking for money. She, you know, the first thing I think it was, was she needed money to buy her dad milk. So why her dad needed milk, I, I don't know. 
Um, second one was her dad was supposedly a pastor of a church and he got sick with dengue fever or something and the church raised a thousand dollars and then he, they spent it or I don't exactly remember what happened. So she was asking him for a thousand dollars to pay back the people of the church. Um, she needed a cell phone, her cell phone broke. This story continues, so the TikToker goes on to say that she faked an asthma attack and other health problems and the expat went over to the Philippines and had unprotected fun. He went home and after only two weeks she told him that she was pregnant. So these stories are very common and I agree with the OP that it's not every Filipina, most Filipinas won't do this, but there are some like this and they will do whatever it takes to get money. Again, this is those red flags that keep coming up. But you see what makes me really really mad is that our family, I mean the family of Filipina who is married to a foreigner, they will never understand this kind of stuff. On their mind is that they think once you are married to a Filipina you are obligated to them you know you're obligated to support them and this is very very terrible and I really really do not like this there are so many advantages to marrying a Filipina, but if we were looking at the disadvantages, marrying into the family is one of the biggest. Most expats that I've spoken to secretly or not so secretly do not like this situation where they are expected to contribute to the family, any kind of emergencies, problems, they are the financial support. Will this be reversed if you are sick and you need financial support from the family? Most likely not. But on the plus side, this creator is fully aware that it's not a good deal. My advice is to always downplay your income. Downplay what you have, what you can afford, and what you make. For all foreigners, if you ever come to the Philippines and choose to date a Filipino, just be wary of a couple of things. Number one, no matter what emotion they're feeling, just know you're gonna get slapped. They're happy, whoop out. They're sad, whoop out. They're hungry, whoop out. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> The brujas that didn't listen and still want to date a Filipina. Why would you expect us to be honest? We have been trained since we were teenagers to lie. We will lie to the woman who pushed us out of the vagina. You think we're truthful to you? You think? <laughs> now, some of the things you are expected to do if courting a girl are the following. If you take your girlfriend to a restaurant, you are expected to pay the bill. If you travel back to your home country and back here again, you are expected to bring a gift or a bike buy in bags full of goodies, preferably lots of chocolates. As you all know, the Philippines has an exceptionally low standard of living. Even people working full-time jobs can barely afford food on their salary. So just being generous towards her family will be highly appreciated. Most expats are willing to pay for things, especially in the Philippines, right? Because we tend to have more money and it's not fair if we take someone out to an expensive place and we expect them to pay for it. But I really don't understand society when they expect men to pay for everything all of the time. I'm not talking about women who are seriously poor or have no money because of course foreigners do pay in this situation. But I'm talking about the women who have plenty of money. There are many Westerners who have this image of a Filipina being poor but let me tell you there are some very 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 wealthy Filipinas out there but there are a lot of guys who go over to the Philippines and they don't care about the money but for me it's a judgment of character I like so many others love to pay for stuff but don't just expect it if you are on a date with a Filipina and she says that she will pay 50% that's a good sign you can of course refuse but the sheer act of offering shows a lot about a person character if you are serious to me put my picture as a profile picture in your Facebook so I know that I am the only one woman that you love 
Like so many TikToks, this is obviously a joke, and the voice, I think, is from another video, but it's funny because it's true. Social media is a big deal in the Philippines. Now, if your partner wants you to change your Facebook profile to hers, and she is being serious, is this a red flag? Well, I'll let you be the judge. But know that your social media will be carefully studied, your pictures will be screenshotted and shared with the family, and if you're on Tinder, it's likely that your profile will be sent to her friends as well. Here's some relationship advice for dating a Filipina. 99 out of 100 Filipina, this is true. If she's jealous, she's into you. Yeah, or she's a psycho. Jokes aside, this is mainly everyone. For example, Thai women are also very jealous, but that's mainly because Thai men have a lot of affairs, statistically speaking. But if you find you're dating someone and she is jealous, try finding out the reason why. Is there something causing friction that you both need to sit down and talk about? Looks are not everything. Making her laugh and smile is literally one of the best things a woman can ask for. Looks fade, so you can be no. handsome now, but when, when you get older, 50 years later, look, your looks will fade. But if you can make her laugh for the rest of her life or make her smile, that's a big plus. Um, no, looks do matter. Funny is good. <laughs> but it's not the most pressing need for most single Filipinas. You can be a really good looking man, have a lot of money and find a woman no problem. If you don't have the looks or the money and are just funny, you are likely to be friend zoned. What I've understood over the years is that women will say that they want a certain type of man when in reality they want something completely different. Money is important, good looks are important. It's not shallow to say so. I don't understand why we are living in a time where we cannot just say what we like. I like Filipinas. I find Filipinas very intelligent, very beautiful and very committed. As an independent man, I also find independent women very attractive. It's not a bad thing to admit what we like. Like they just disappear. So they should be... They should make sure that when they date a Filipina or they want to be with a Filipina, they give all their love because as for us, when we love someone, we give all that we have to offer. We give all our best. Well, that sounds great, but it's risky business nowadays. The best thing that you can do, whether you are an expat watching this or you are a Filipina, is to take your time. You don't know if this person is right for you until you've been through many different experiences, and this takes time. Most people in today's world have their barriers up. Filipinas have been hurt by expats. Expats have been hurt by Filipinas. Nobody wants to go through that pain, so take your time, share your vulnerabilities, but don't let your guard down too much. You will know when it's the right time. This subject is always subjective and it's filled with so many opinions. I'm telling you how it is based on what I've experienced, comparing that with the data and the feedback from Filipinas and other expats. But naturally, there will always be exceptions to the rules, and every Filipina you will meet will be different. 